Good afternoon. This is Robert Rayburn. It is September 25th of 2023. We're just wrapping up uh, the another month of September here, which of course has introduced market volatility. And this should come no surprise. This always tends to be the time of the year when this types of this type of volatility takes place in the market. But we're going to go through and break down what's more sort of high level market issues that we see right now, but then specifically, what are the sectors and areas in the pockets of the market that continue to represent pretty attractive areas for long-term investment? So we'll go ahead and get started on that. So I'm going to share my screen like I usually do. And the title of this week's update is, is oil going to $150 a barrel? Now, for those of you who have been with us for a while now, they will know that we are very bullish on oil. We think it's a long-term secular story as it relates to supply and demand. But more specifically, we think there's some short-term catalysts as well as it relates to OPEC and geopolitics, and as well as how the U.S. has been managing its emergency oil uh, inventories. So we'll go through all of that this week. So the three big things, the stock market correction that we're seeing in the broader market, that remains ongoing. We think there's probably a little bit more to go on the downside there. I don't think a lot more. Uh, I don't think, you know, I think that you'll probably read some, some panicky headlines and things of that nature. This seems to be uh, fairly healthy. Uh, and more specifically, we're not really in those areas that are of most concern, such as some of the high price uh, tech uh, technology stocks and, and the sector within the growth areas of the market that are pretty expensive valuation wise that struggle in a high interest rate environment. We are largely out of those areas and focused on the deep value pockets of the market. Number two, we do believe oil is uh, po poised or at least maybe poised for a fairly historic upward move. We'll go through why. And then lastly, of course, uh, technology stocks uh, continue uh, to struggle as it relates to rising interest rates. So first thing, this is the chart of the S&P 500. Market breadth continues to narrow. So fewer and fewer stocks are, are making higher highs on those rallies in the market. And we can see here the market for the you know, previous 52 weeks put in a high around 4,600. This was back in July. We sold off, call it 5 or 6% down into this call 4,350 level. And then we rallied. And now one of the things, if you go back a couple of weeks, uh, I think it might've been our last weekly update. Uh, one of the things we mentioned was that this rally appeared to have failed, right? In other words, it made a lower high versus the high back in July. And that was a bit of a red flag as it relates to the S&P 500, right? So the rally failed to make new highs. And then more recently, we saw a sell-off into this week where it was tech technology led weakness and we broke through those august lows so the good news is we're not invested in the s&p 500 now we have companies that are inside that index but we're not in the s&p 500 and there are areas of opportunity as as the s&p 500 sells off that are holding in a lot better and that's what we're going to focus on today so uh, why is the market selling off well, no one ever knows why that specific reason, but we can kind of surmise what those reasons may be. And certainly the one of the leading factors that we think are impacting investor sentiment are interest rates. So again, something we've been very clear on over the last six to eight months is that we are not in the camp that interest rates have topped out. We are not in the camp that now you should go and buy government bonds, uh, long duration government bonds. We think rates are going higher. And, you know, we can see here just on this chart alone that the 10 year is breaking out of a year long consolidation. So now breaking up through that four and a half percent mark. Same thing happening on the 30 year bond yield. You're seeing that play through into mortgage rates in the real estate sector. And quite frankly, it could go higher. We could be in and around on the 10 year around five and a half percent. If we look at uh, historically that premium of the 10-year yield relative to the inflation rates, about 201 basis points. And that alone with inflation sitting around three and a half percent gets you that five and a half percent mark. So would not be surprised to see interest rates continue to move higher from this. Short term, from a trade perspective, 
a little bit overbought in terms of rates uh, going to the upside. Could see that check back a little bit, but the broader trend and our, our whole thing is don't fight the trend is that rates continue to migrate higher. So knowing that, assuming that to be correct, what works in a high rate environment? Well, there's a few things that uh, that work in a high rate environment. Well, one thing has historically been commodities. And within commodities, oil has tended to act very well in rising interest rates in interest rate environments. And there's a number of reasons why, because rates tend to go up during inflation or during economic uh, acceleration. Uh, so on, in other words, higher nominal growth, high, higher nominal demand, which fuels inflation. But if we look at the data, right, and that's usually the most important thing we want to focus on is during rate hiking cycles, uh, the NASDAQ uh, typically structurally underperforms oil by a significant amount, right? So if we go back to the 88 cycle, NASDAQ up 6.3, oil up 40, uh, oil up 41 again, NASDAQ up five. Uh, even then in 99 cycle, during the height of the NASDAQ bubble, oil up 100%, NASDAQ up 58.9. And so really 20, 2015 is the only anomaly. And that was when the oil bubble popped as it relates to the Saudis uh, trying to get the shale drillers uh, out of the picture. Um, so th that was a very anomalous situation. But this time around so far, 17 and a half versus 10. So right now, there's there's a there's three specific things that we really like about oil and why we're so, so bullish on oil. And we think a lot of it's math. First, high interest rates. So how do high interest rates impact the price of oil? When interest rates are really high, an energy company has to decide which wells they're going to drill. And when rates are high, the cost of capital is high. So in other words, that well has got to have really attractive economics in order to drill it in a high interest rate environment versus if interest rates are a lot lower, that hurdle rate to justify drilling that well is a lot lower as well. So you can have a, a less efficient oil well with poor economics that actually deliver positive returns for that company in terms of cash flow when rates are super low versus when rates are at where they're at today where the company actually may lose money. So what does that mean, brass tacks? That means that less wells are likely to be drilled when interest rates are high, which caps your supply response uh, in a, a rising demand environment for the price of oil. Number two is that the break-even rates for the energy industry in the US have risen to about $75 a barrel, right? So anytime oil falls below 75, you start to see rigs uh, that are taken offline. You start to see drilling scaled back. You start to see supply fall back down. Why? Because anything below 75, a lot of these companies are losing money. Versus a couple of years ago, that might've been $50 a barrel. So as those break-even rates rise, you are creating a structurally more favorable price environment for the price of oil. And this has to do with equipment, inflation, labor, all of these things that over time lift up those break-even rates uh, in the energy industry. And then lastly, OPEC is turning the screws on supply just as demand is starting to increase out of India and China, the US and Europe. So you got demand going up, OPEC turning the screws, and we won't get into the politics of that this week, but turning the screws on supply and then in addition to that, U.S. supply has started to peak out as well. So what has been working so far during this time period? We can see not a lot, but what has been working right here at the very top, the price of oil, right? Since the interest rate hike started, it has followed that historic pattern. Oil is up 19.3%. When we look at small caps, right? The only sector that has made a cycle high recently has been energy. So energy made its most recent high in, on September 14th of 2023. Every other sector, the previous high was made way back in 2021. This is a statement of resiliency. It's a statement of leadership. And it's a statement of, we think, is emerging long-term secular growth for the energy sector. Then we look at the fundamentals. So this is 
uh, JP Morgan report that recently came out that shows the projected demand. And this flat, you know, this black line, by the way, is the adoption of EV. Notice how it's not going down because you still have a lot of rising demand as it relates to emerging markets. So you have a slightly flatter demand line over the coming years. But notice what's happening with supply. Supply is going down significantly. And it's actually not so much OPEC. It's the U.S. U.S. production has started the peak. So whether you know we're looking at the Bakken or the Niobrara or the Eagle Ford, those three big oil fields in the U.S. have already peaked. There's only one oil field, and it's the biggie, the Permian Basin, that is still growing production. But if we go into the earnings calls and the commentary of many of these companies, a lot of these executives are saying the same thing. They've drilled their best wells already. The efficiency rates as to which these wells are being drilled is starting to fall. So that tends to be the early indication that production, the production peak is pretty close. So U.S. starting to peak out and come down. OPEC turning the screws on supply sets, up, sets us up, assuming demand holds in, and demand's always that one that's harder to forecast, of a big, big supply-demand shortfall. So... This is one of the reasons why we're, we're very, very, very bullish on oil. And then we look at U.S. oil inventories. This is the strategic reserves for the U.S. back to 1982, 1981 levels. U.S. already knows that if the Biden administration or any administration in the White House goes and taps it again, they're out of bullets. If they do what they did last year, there will literally be no barrels left. The market already knows that. That's why the price of oil is holding in. Number two, the total inventory, so this is your non-strategic reserve inventories, are also collapsing. Why? Demand is high, and OPEC is, is turning down supply. And the good news for us as investors is that the market's still in denial about this. So when we look at, right now, uh, we look at the commodity ETF, we see that those ETF flows are generally increasing, right? And that uh, commodities are starting to outperform the broader market. But when we look at ETF flows sector by sector, what we see is people are still chasing yesterday's leadership, technology, high PE growth, consumer, those areas. Where's money coming out of? Commodities, energy, financials, gold, Europe. With the exception of maybe financials, we think all of those are actually showing signs of technical leadership, technical areas of emergence to be leadership in the 2020s, especially energy. So the fact that you're not getting investors falling all over themselves to get to these areas, that's a really bullish sign in our opinion. And we think we're in the very early innings of where energy can go. And when we look at commodity prices relative to the Dow Jones, again, we're talking 120-year lows. We think that commodities are incredibly cheap relative to stocks, hence uh, why we are positioned the way we are across client portfolios. So the bottom line here, ladies and gentlemen, is that higher interest rates, falling supply, durable demand are setting up for a potential historic move in oil. We really believe that. We think $150 oil is not out of the cards. In my opinion, this is just an opinion I think that could be a baseline forecast. Uh, so three big things. Stock market correction is ongoing, led by technology. We are not in those areas. Um, and I think there's a little bit more downside in there. But underneath the surface, you're seeing accumulation activity in areas such as energy. Number two, as the oil price rises, we expect consumer stocks to underperform. It doesn't take a doesn't take a, a genius to understand why that may be, right? Higher oil prices, less discretionary spending. And then lastly, commodities as an asset class appear to be historically cheap. So that's what we got for you this week, 888-543-3776. Feel free to give us a call. Have a fantastic week. Please feel free to reach out to your advisor if you have any specific portfolio questions. And we'll talk again next week. Have a great week.